We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! Welcome to the Mouthpiece, episode 28, year one. Today, we're doing a special live broadcast. We're going to talk about what's going on with me next week. We're going to talk about a lot of things going on in my life. And we're going to have Lane back-to-back flack on with a special interview. So, buckle up, stay tuned, call on in, the Mouthpiece is next. What up, what up, everybody? God, just got done watching that Oklahoma-Baylor game. Uh, I can't believe Oklahoma almost lost, but whatever. They played a great game, Baylor. Uh, a lot of fun to watch this morning. Uh, things are eh, things are going all right for me. I've had a, had a really rough couple weeks uh, pain-wise because of the fact it rains here every fucking day. When it rains, I feel like shit. So, uh, you know, I've had to deal with that every time I go to, I've made plans to go play some poker, then all of a sudden things get bad and I don't, I don't end up going to play. So, um, today I decided to, uh, kind of get up early. Uh, I've been getting massages like twice a week, uh, which haven't really helped. Um, so it is what it is, but, uh, you know, things are, things are looking forward. Everything's looking up, staying positive. Next week, um, uh, we're going to be playing, uh, the Bellagio five diamond tournament. Uh, I haven't played a no limit tournament since, uh, oh, I think the world series. Well, maybe it was, uh, maybe I was after the world series. Maybe I played one, uh, down in LA, but, um, yeah, I haven't played much, uh, no limit tournaments or nothing. I, I don't really travel the tournament circuit because of my back and my injury and stuff. It's real tough for me to travel. So I try my hardest not to, uh, you know, go on the tournament trail. But uh, we're going to play the Five Diamonds next week. Um, I um, have a, some good news that possibly could be coming up uh, for me uh, here in the future. Uh, but I can't really let you all in on that right now. But things are uh are definitely going well um health wise it's uh, you know i've been in and out of pain but lost some weight kind of been chilling around the house didn't haven't really done much this week just kind of watched a little football basketball girlfriend's been out of town for nine days uh and uh my car fucking broke down i don't well i don't know what the fuck's wrong with it it's When I drive it, it makes a stupid noise in the front wheelhouse. It goes... Something like that. I have no idea. Uh, And the steering light comes on and it says, pull over, you have a flat tire or steering light. Uh, But I have no idea because the tire never goes flat. It just always says it's flat. Uh, So uh, I accused my girlfriend of running into something before she left town, but she denies it, so whatever uh it is what it is um so we're what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the phone lines um you can call me live 702-329-0480 702-329-80480 and uh see what everybody has to say today uh you're more than welcome to call me see what's going on uh we're going to be calling Mr. Lane Flack in about 15 minutes, uh, see what's going on in his crazy life. Uh, we used to really have a lot of fun together. I promised him that uh, uh, we won't be, uh, we won't talk about the um, the crazy days. Well, we will, but we, we have to, well, fuck it. You know, he, he'll, he'll, he'll come around. I'll, I'll kind of juice him a little bit. You know, uh, and people don't realize, uh, yeah, me and Lane, uh, we used to, uh, we used to do it pretty hard in the early 2000s. Uh, I, uh, I quit doing everything in 03 and I think Lane just quit in 2018, but I'm not quite sure. Uh, but he's, he's a good guy. Uh, he's, uh, I mean, he's, he's a lot of fun, a lot of fun to play with, um, uh, we have uh, a lot of good stories, um, and uh, so that's really kind of what's been going on. 
let's see what's going on in my chat over here. Uh, I thought you were going to move this over here, my chat, so I could look at people so I didn't. Oh, you forgot. Ah, okay. Because, see, I don't know what people are fucking saying. I have to look over there. All right, there we go. Okay. So, um, I know it's football day, and uh, we're doing this. Uh, well, it is what it is. Uh, who do I think is going to be in the Super Bowl? Uh, I uh, think it's going to be Kansas City and New Orleans. There you go. I'll, I'll go out on a, on a limb with that. Uh, I'm wondering if uh, all of a sudden it says there's zero people online and nothing is scrolling. Could we have gotten knocked offline here, buddy, or no? No, over here everything's good. What's that? Everything's good over here. Okay. Okay. It just, I haven't seen anything roll across in a while, so I was just wondering. Yeah, well, uh, came, uh, I typed it. Maybe I just said nobody's here. So, uh, yeah, everybody's good, good to go. Um, so, uh, wow, what a game that Oklahoma game is. Uh, so, um, uh, that was pretty good to watch this morning. Uh, looking forward to the games tomorrow. Um, heck, it's really uh, been a t been a slow week for me. Uh, oh, there's that's what's been going on a little bit. So, my girlfriend left town nine days ago, and then I ate every bit of food that she left to the house. And my car doesn't drive, so uh, I did go uh, last Friday. Uh, I went out, let's see, I spent Thanksgiving with my parents on Thursday. And then Friday, I went to a hockey game with Daniel. And uh, that was fun. So that was like the only time I've been out of the house. What are we, Saturday? So we're talking uh, eight days later, I decided to get out of the house last night. Went to the Bellagio to, uh, to cash chips so I can uh, have money to uh, buy some food in the house and put buy something order some food in because well this is what I do <laughs> so uh, I appreciate you guys um, and uh, it's a uh, the podcast is only going to get better we have um, um, hopefully uh, special things lined up here here in the next few weeks uh, where we're going to be hopefully doing a live broadcast uh, from a special venue, I hope, uh, which we'll be doing every week. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, and uh, that's really about it. Uh, there's uh, It's really been an uninteresting week. I went down last night, got some money so I can eat, which I ate last night's sushi. Uh, it felt good to just be, eat because I hadn't eaten in like a day and a half because I had no money and no... Uh, well, I had money, but I had no... Uh, food in the house my girlfriend uh, uh, I ate everything she left me because that's what I do I did eat all the healthy things too I ate all the baked uh, chicken and mashed potatoes that they had left in the uh, <laughs> in the refrigerator so uh, it is what it is uh, uh, what a bunch of Oh, there's the nice guy. Okay, you have nothing else to do. Talk about doing drugs. So do your own drugs, buddy. Have a nice day. So I got a phone call. Let's see what my friends have to say. Welcome to the mouthpiece. This is Mike. Hi, Mike. Uh, this is Ed from L.A. I'm a big fan. Hey, Ed. How are you doing, buddy? Thanks for calling. Appreciate Great. it. So I, was, I had a question about, um, I love the old stories back in the late 90s. Can you talk about the 1998 um, World Series where you, where you, um, when I back Scotty? Yeah, you back Scotty, and then I was like watching the video, and, and, and Daniel's behind you. Can you talk about the crew you guys had? Yeah. Like, was Daniel part of your crew? Yeah. I love those kind of stories. It was, it was a good story. You know, I... It's, it's, it's kind of a, a real interesting story. So at the time, 
a uh, guy was staking me, um, started take a stake at Scotty. You know, Scotty won like 66,000 in the 98 World Series. And then uh, when we called them to put up 10,000 for the main event, he didn't want to do it. And uh, I don't know, and he just like fell off the map. Nobody could reach him. He said he wasn't interested in putting up 10,000 after Scotty had already made him like 66,000. And then I had a dream he won the World Series. And so I kind of put it up, uh, I put him in like four thousand dollar satellites, which he offered, and then I told him I could only put up five hundred more, and so I put up five hundred. Two other people put up two fifty. It was the last satellite of the night, uh, and then he went on went on to win the World Series, and that was uh, kind of a start for me. But it was also uh, uh, one of the worst things that happened to me because. Uh, I think that's the only time I ever won staking anybody. I think I went through about 4.2 million staking people after that. Uh, so wow. um, <laughs> it was uh, good and bad. Uh, I've never had luck staking people, and I think I've probably put three or four or five million in people's pockets when they stake me. Maybe more. I lost track. So that's pretty much it. We used to, you know, it was that was kind of like the beginning. I was really new to poker. Uh, I had been playing professionally for about a year and a half, uh, and uh, Daniel just started playing in '98 uh, when um, uh, when he won a pot limit hold'em tournament uh, that me and Todd and him were playing in the same satellite in. So then we all just became friends, and it kind of went from there. So, um, one more question. Uh, sure. 97, the year before that, you said you were in the background watching Stu. I don't yeah. see you in the video. Are you, are oh, you I'm in the, the like, I was outside. I watched the whole final table. Okay. Yeah. I, I, it was, um, they, it, back then the World Series was, uh, in April, May. That was beginning of May. They had a 110 degree heat wave out, outside. Uh, that was in 97 when yeah. Stu won it. That was one and done. No, and uh, <laughs> I remember the final table like it was yesterday. I mean, it was like 22 years ago. I can't even believe it. And I was I had not played any no limit yet, and I was really really good limit hold'em player, like probably one of the top three in the world. So then I went. Uh, I was just uh, learning, watching, getting tips from people, and uh, then uh, in '99, the first no limit hold'em tournament I played, I won. So uh, and that was. Uh, the 3500 uh, at the horseshoe, which was back then they had the 10K and they had the 3500. That was it. Those were the only two Nolan and Hold'em tournaments in the world. So uh, huh. it was, uh, there, it's, it's far cry from what it used to be. So, I mean, it's just a lot different now. And, and last real quick quick question What do you think of five car Omaha that is coming uh, around? Or, has I, it been around? Or? I'm not a big fan of it. Is it a new thing? I'm, I'm just, oh, okay. I'm not a big fan of it. And if, you know, if you're going to play it, you, you know, you got to play it live. I, I don't trust it at all online. I mean, if you get two people sitting next to each other where they can see 10 out of the 30 cards, you, you know, you just can't win. So <laughs> I just uh, don't play it online. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, if you want to gamble a little bit, it's, it's worth, uh, you know, playing live, but. I kind of stick with no limit mixed games and whatever's going on pretty much. So that's about it. Yep. Thank I appreciate, you so much. I appreciate you. the call, man. Thank you so All much right. for calling later. All right. Bye. All right, guys. So, um, oh, nice guy. Nice phone call. Uh, a little slow today. What we're going to do is, uh, we're going to call Lane. I told him I'm going to call him at, uh, one. We are five minutes till one. Uh, let me see what we're doing. Do you want to, uh, Mr., uh, do you want to call Lane right now there, buddy? Or do you want to do, huh? I need the number. Oh, you need the number. Okay. Uh, that's the number right there. We'll give Lane a call, and then we'll, uh, We'll do our uh, pick of the week, and uh, then we'll see if anybody else wants to uh, call in afterwards. Uh, I need to wake the fuck up, man. Oh, 
We got another call. Let's get this call first. Welcome to the mouthpiece. This is Mike. What's up? Hey, Mike. Uh, my name is Mark. I'm from uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Hi, Mark. How are you doing, buddy? Um, about uh, mixed games. How should one try to get involved more in mixed games? I only ever played uh, No Limit, but I played some OE. Oh, you have played some OE. Um, okay. Um, the... I, the best thing I, I tell people is, well, I, I learned how to play mixed game playing 2 and 400 and 4 and 800, but don't do that. That's kind of stupid. Yeah, uh, that's a little, little out of my price range. <laughs> but uh, I just say play small games. Uh, there's a lot of mixed games around. Uh, there's really not much books on it, on playing mixed games. I'm going to be uh, uh, launching the uh, after the first of the year my own uh, mixed game site teaching site which will probably be around february i guess uh but uh you just gotta just put the hours in and learn and you gotta want to learn and uh th th that's really my best advice uh to you is you know it's just like anything else you gotta put the hours in uh but you got you, you know you gotta want to do it and i uh you know i tell people all the time you uh you know no limit hold them pot limit omaha it's kind of becomes pretty much it especially no limit hold'em it's a solve game so uh where the where the money is right now is if you can't get in the private games it's just in the mixed games because you know yeah. if, you, if you're good at mixed no, games, I, you know, I, no, no. I definitely see that trend that's why i was you know i look forward to hopefully uh being a member of your new course then um, yeah absolutely man and it, it's going to be really good and and i uh I've got uh, there's so many things that I'm working on right now that is going to be really good, and I'm just uh, I just want to just tell everybody right now, but I just can't uh, because I just got to wait make sure everything's done. Uh, but uh, good things are on the horizon for me, for poker, for everything. So, uh, I do you think any of um? Hello. Hello. I think we might have lost you. Holds up. Oh, wait, there you go. You're back. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. I, yeah. What was your last question? Um, I was just saying, do do you think uh some of the stuff in Super Systems Two holds up with you know some of the mixed game strategies? Um, you're asking the wrong person because I've never read a poker book in my life. So, uh, oh, oh. Uh, okay. Uh, well, then I look I, forward to your course, my friend. Yeah, I'm, uh, I actually shouldn't say that. I've, I've, the first, the, I read one book, it was once Scholastic's Beginning Hold'em when I was learning how to play Limit Hold'em as a beginner. That was the only book I read. Other than that, I've learned everything by myself. I've never run any Sims, I don't spend 80 hours a a day analyzing hands and I still crush and crush and crush. So, um, you can't t teach talent. I think the people that, that need to learn all that, all that other, all the mathematics and GTO and all the hand solving shit is, are just people that don't have talent. So, you know, so it's, yeah, I, I'm I think a bit, I'm more, I'm more, I'm more in your camp, my friend. But that's what, yeah. Is, but yeah. you know, if you don't, if you don't have talent, you know, GTO and ICM and and, and learning all the math is, is, you know, you could be a winning poker player, you know. But uh, I can't, you can't teach talent. I, I tell people that all the time, and it's just something. Yeah. The, the man upstairs granted me with somehow. After everything I've been through, it's like the only thing he granted me with. Like, so I can't complain. Listen, some people get dealt. Some people get dealt a hand. They don't get anything dealt to them. You know, I got dealt one thing. Right. No. <laughs> you know, I so, you gotta take what you can get sometimes. Yeah. You know, I, you know, God didn't give me looks. You know, He gave me a uh, good personality and the ability to play poker. And and my brain ain't the sharp. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. So, uh, you know, I take what I can get. So. Well, cool, man. I appreciate all you're doing, my friend. You, and uh, you got it, man. Best and, of luck to you. And, and there's going to be a lot of lot of things going on, uh, you know, here in the future. So, uh, you know, stick around. You know, listen in on the podcast every week. There's going to be uh, we're going to be dealing mostly with sports, poker. Uh, God, so many different things coming up. I don't even know where to start. So, uh, I appreciate you listening and uh, 
and to all your friends listening. No, to I've uh, always loved your uh, podcast, and I look forward to uh, seeing you bumping around this summer at the World Series, my friend. I'll be I'll be in my scooter, flipping around, flying around. I know. I saw it last year, so uh, <laughs> I'll stop by and say hello, my friend. Absolutely. Thank you, man. Take care. Later. Take care. All right. Bye bye. All right. Let's call Lane. 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 Let, Lane's on his way to a poker game. He might already be in it. He, he, they invite him to the game. They don't invite me. Is this Lane back to back, Flack? Let me turn. Let me turn the. Let me turn the football game down. Yeah, turn the football hey, game down. What's going on? How's it going, buddy? What? Watch a little football. Did you? I thought you were playing poker today at one. Well, I told him I had to do this show. Oh, look at this, man! So you're gonna go play poker well, after you talk with me? That's awesome. There you go. There's a good friend, you guys. See I'll that? tell you this: they're not gonna not have a seat for me. <laughs> exactly. So that was about what I was getting ready to ask. How come they invite you to this private game and they don't invite me? Well, you're, I guess we're too good. Exactly. Good answer. Good answer. That's the answer. I mean, I, that, I mean, that, hold on. You, you want the truth, or do you want to know what you, or do you want to hear what you want to hear? I want to hear both. I want to hear the truth and what I want to hear. What you want to hear is you're too good. The truth is, I'm probably more fun. <laughs> probably. You, you're more. You're probably. More, you probably. I'm fun, but I just. I don't get. I. I I I I'm, I don't give the motherfuckers action, man. I just well. Well, the know. other thing is, imagine this: imagine a table every day with you and David Gray at it. Yeah, I'm just like, I, well, I always knew that David Gray was a fish cake. So I, for them to invite him every single day, I they he I mean he's just how does he win? Because he ever win? Have you ever seen him win? He he does. He he goes on rushes, but. I, 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 you know, I really don't like talking bad about. No, players. but David Gray's he, one of my misses, good friends. I'm just joking. He misses out on a lot of value. He misses out on value, and then he whines like a bitch, and then he. He doesn't whine too much because we have Lloyd there. Lloyd covers all that, all those things. Ah, see, I didn't know that. Oh, see, I haven't. When I haven't... Lloyd's there, when Lloyd's there, nobody gets a chance to whine. Ah, okay. But it's, uh, it's it really is unbelievable. The second Lloyd leaves, everybody. Everybody's demeanor changes. <laughs> I know. I, I. It's a shame I haven't gotten into this. It, game. It's really one of the most. It's the craziest game I've ever played in. Honestly, when it comes to personality. Oh, I, I believe it. I, I, I got in the game a little bit late one night. Uh, I was going to sit down. I was there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but no, you, you I, and Phil. Uh, no, but I'm talking about there was a night after there was. Uh, it was oh, two you. four. Then it went to four eight. I got there. There was a seat open. And they lowered it to three six, not for me, for because they wanted to play three six. And I go, I asked uh, Hanks, I go, how long is the game going to go for? And he's like, it won't go for another hour. And then this guy Taylor came in, and I went to go yeah. play PLO because uh, 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 what's his name told me it was a really good game, and it was. And I come back four, five hours later, they're still playing three six, and I was just like, "Wow!" If I knew the game would go all night, I just didn't want to get stuck in three six hundred even thirty minutes, and the game breaks. So, right. well, um, we get you know we get some pretty we get some pretty good customers that come through, and Hanks has a pretty good lock on all of them. You know, some of the German guys come over, some you know Russians, some Ukrainians, and they all come to play in that game. But the PLO game and no limit games get to be so good, like. Uh, Jamie Gold would come walking in. Well, that was, was it. Jamie Gold, Jamie Gold was in the PLO game. That's that's, yeah, that's why my I friend said, said you got to I mean, go when get that, in the when game. When that game goes, you know, the whole city shuts down. <laughs> yeah, dude, they were playing quarter. We were playing quarter quarter, quarter PLO. Like like it went raise. I three bet it. He calls three bets gold, and the flop came like ace ten three with two clubs, and. Um, we I put in like eight thousand bet raise reviews like what else I three bet free flop I mean I can't have anything but three aces right and uh, right. and so then uh, the uh, the turn card comes a ten of clubs and Jamie goes I think that's me I'm like I paired the board make me aces <laughs> I'm like you think it's you how can it possibly be everybody's like 
Like, really? How could it possibly be you? And then we so, ran. So, the you funny... know, it, when, when you play a no limit or PLO, it comes down to does the story make sense by the time you hit the river? And I don't. I, I, as 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 nice and as much as Jamie Gold likes to talk and tell us, he doesn't know the story ever. No, no, he doesn't. He doesn't know the story at all. I, I mean. Uh, yeah. He's a nice. I mean, he's a nice guy. I get along with him really good, you know. So I don't. He's like when a person is telling a joke, he misses the punchline. <laughs> yeah, and so then we no, we ran it twice, and I, I think he hit a. Cl- the funny thing was, is he only had a gutter ball king, which I had ace ace king in my hand, so he had three kings and I had and eight clubs, and then one club came off the pair of the yeah. board, and then he on the second board we we ran, he ran it twice. He hit it the second time, but. Uh, yeah, so I ended up losing. If, Jay, if Jamie, if Jamie was, if Jay, uh, honestly, if Jay, honestly, if Jamie was smart, he'd play five card PLO, where yeah, where it, you know there's more of a luck factor. Yeah, 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 yeah. He he's in uh, my opinion. Yeah, I I, I I agree. So um, you know, uh, people always uh, the call in, you know, they they always want to talk about like a lot of a lot of the crazy things we used to do. Uh, but you know, I told them. Uh, well, we'll leave Lane up. Let tell the stories if he wants to tell all the stories. But, <laughs> as much but, as uh, you know, I, oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we had a lot of fun in the past, but we have I have a lot of regrets too. <laughs> yeah, I you know the funny thing is, is I don't have any regrets. I'm I, I mean I, I have I, regrets in this sense. You know, when you leave that kind of life, you kind of throw all the responsibilities out the door. You yeah, know, you and you had a my, you know, the thing is, is you had your a, actions, and we don't even care. Your daughter was like five years old at the time. How old is she now? Shit. She's 24. Um, 24. Yeah, yeah, when I separated with her mother, she was five, and that's kind of when I went a little wild. Right, right. So, yeah, so I, I can understand some regrets because, you know, you had a lot of responsibilities, and we, you kind of led a pretty crazy lifestyle. Um, we, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't start leading that lifestyle after, after I had to give her up. You know, I, you're right. The more I think about it, you know, and uh, – you know, I, 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 I think back a lot of times I, t- I tell people like uh, I go back to the tunica days. Right. And uh, I, I, like, I always sit there. I like to blame Kenny Goldstein for everything, for everything. It, well, it's, you know, he gateway everything. And I trusted him one day and he said it, too. He goes, well. Ten years later, I guess we'll see each other in rehab. <laughs> yeah, so you know, for people out there, so this guy named Kenny Goldstein, he's a nice, super nice guy. I ran into him at the World Series this year. First time I've seen him in about seven years, and I'll never forget. He was we were run, we were at Tunica Plain, and and he's running around getting everybody hooked on MDMA. Uh, yeah, and it was I've never funny. tried anything. No, me That's neither. The first drug and, I ever touched. And I never, and I said no, 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 for about another year maybe eight months. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I met this uh, stripper on the uh, cruise uh, who, by the way, I ran into in Florida three weeks ago. It's the first time I've seen her in about 10 years. And uh, she taught her, my best friend talked me into it. And uh, all the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. Then, then we kind of had a lot. We had once, a lot. Again, once again, it took a woman. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and uh, it's usually, yeah. They, Cause you always fall for that shit, man. The, the girls do that to you, you know? And, uh, and it, you know we had a lot of fun times. I I just remember a lot of a lot of mornings with me, you, and Ted, and at the at the cheetah at the cheetah. <laughs> cheetah morning and night. Cheetah morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Morning and night. Everybody said, "Lane, like, why'd you get here at noon?" I said, "He had a good parking spot." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny, you know. And we, uh, you know, you know, we had a good time, man. I, I don't I don't regret it, you know. I you know what I think though. I, I look back at. Had a lot of things we did and crazy things we did and I, and and like I always tell people all the time you know my, my, my one of my heroes in poker is John Hennigan because you know people don't know what he went through you know people just don't realize that this guy here was gonna die. oh yeah he was gonna die I sat side by side by I sat side by side with him for many and many a day yeah and he was gonna die if he didn't go to rehab and uh and he went to rehab and to this day he goes to AA like twice a week still and uh, he's had tremendous poker success, and uh, I, I cried for him when he won that that uh, Borgata Poker Open. I think it was two thousand and. Well, you know, you know what the hardest thing so. is, and probably everybody can relate to this. If they went down the path that we did, like John said, I don't know how I'll ever play poker again. How can I enjoy it? Right. Like I did before. Right. 
I mean, just go, you know, to start doing everything dead sober is boring. Oh uh, yeah. And many, many. That's why so many people relapse. You know, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. Life, life is different and is dull. Yeah, and uh, it's uh, you know, you look. The thing is, you learn to to uh, to appreciate life in different ways. Like I had to do. I mean, I had to have this this major injury that you know changed everything. Yeah. But but even then, I mean, I made up my mind when. 2003 uh when i got back from uh from paris and i said fuck i've i slept two days in the last nine and that's when I, that's that's, <laughs> you know, that's, you, that's so when that, i that's know, when i, I knew i kind of had a, a problem yeah that's when i, I kind of knew i had a problem you know so me, me and me and ted hung out a lot and he had two months he says this he says we sleep when we're tired and we eat when we're hungry and that was enough said <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit, man. <laughs> you know. I mean, there's a, there, there's a man with a different outlook on life. I mean, this guy, this guy's take on life and the way he saw things, dude, yeah. I would never, ever have seen things the way he did. It just made, and once he explained them, it all made sense. But it was no way, no how I was going to see it that way. No, and you know, people don't realize, like, Ted is... Ted was the man back in the early 2000s. I mean... Ted's still the man. He's still the man. I in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I talk to Ted all every day, almost all the time. Do you really? He's great. I heard he's. Oh, yeah. I heard well, he's doing well. I heard he's doing well. He's doing okay, yeah. And uh, yeah, he's got he's got everything in order. Yeah. So, um, you know, he's got everything in order. He's got. A, is he still with the the girl that he had the baby yeah. with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he uh, was. He's got a son named Kawa. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. Somebody you know, told me that, that that they weren't together anymore. I'm like, how's that you know, possible? You know, I want to touch base on the thing where you say no regrets. You know, like I, I'm not saying I have any regrets, but I am saying if I had to do it all over with, I wouldn't do it the same way. Yeah. Well, you. So, I mean, whether you, that's a, a regret bit, or not, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, like you took it to a whole new level. I mean, I I was at a really high level of partying. You kind of took it to a a level. You and Ted and. Uh, yeah. Well, some of us are a bit more compulsive. You know, well, we, I don't know. I'm pretty a, compulsive, we man. Do, we're going to do it 200. percent I'm pretty compulsive. I mean, like, like I, I mean, I'd never even smoked weed before, and about me either. About two years me ago, either. this girl tells me, uh, "Hey, you know, uh, why, instead of taking a sleeping pill before you go to sleep, start smoking some weed." So I did, and it put me right to sleep, and I was like, "Cool, one less." Exactly pill. what I do. I take two gummies a night just to sleep through the night. Right, and and so it was working, and then uh, and then I kind of like uh, recently got in a uh, because I've been in a lot of pain, so I just uh, I couldn't leave the house. This last two weeks have been kind of brutal, and uh, so I started smoking just uh, instead of the. Uh, well, not really. I don't smoke it, but I use concentrate out of this lighter. I have no idea how the fuck it works. Whatever it is, yeah. Yeah, and um, people are like Ted who? Ted Forrest, motherfucker. Get it right. <laughs> so, um, uh, uh, if people only knew the history of Ted, he, you know, he's just not out there publicly, but right. here's a guy who should be in the Hall of Fame. Here's a guy who people don't quite understand. He probably staked half the people who are in the Hall of Fame. Well, I, I, I agree. <laughs> Uh, and that, you know, uh, the hall of fame's a fucking sham, fucking bullshit, political. It is what it is. You know, it's a popularity. No, it's not a popularity contest. It's, it's a contest of, of a few people who decide who gets in. In other words. Yeah. And there's more to it than just, Hey, this guy deserves it. I, I agree. Right. But on the other side, like I said, your day's coming, Mike. Uh, yeah, so my day's just, coming, your day's coming, uh, Tez's day's coming. You know, I just, the thing, uh, my regret about it all is like my dad's 89. Um, his health is declining. I don't know if he'll make it. I mean, he's doing well now. Right now? But, yeah, he's doing well now. He made it through a really bad time. And I just want to get him while he's still alive. That's all. Uh, I don't want. Well, to... that's one thing. Of course, you'd want to be there to see it and other people to see it. it right. You know, it's it's a reward. To, other than you know, that, that, I, I really wouldn't even give a shit. But that's really, I mean, the thing that matters to me. So that's why I go down every year and I grind and I kill it. And and I think it's I think it's it's interesting how people think that uh, maybe you can answer this in a way. They think that studying the game nonstop. GTO videos simulations are just going to make them the greatest poker player ever. And I tell people all the time, you just that's just horseshit. You can't teach talent, and uh, that's just it. What's your opinion? 
Uh, my opinion is simple. It's it's who every game you sit at is a little different, and it, it, if you're somebody who can adapt to that game as quick as possible, you're going to do better. You're if you're a person when the wheels come off or you go on tilt, you can put the wheels back on the fastest. That's the people who will succeed. Um, Another line that Ted used to say, you know, there's a hundred things you have to do right. If you don't do 97 of them, you probably won't make it. Right. So it's the G, you know, GTO and all that. Yes, it's it's important. But the evolution of poker, once everybody learns that, the game changes again. So it's a constant updating. Yeah. You know, you, it's, it's constantly changing. And I use this example. In No Limit, it, it, back in the day, if somebody raised under the gun, they had two aces or two kings. Right. So when, once people started realizing, oh, if you raise under the gun, they think I have this. They start raising with the five six. Yeah, of course. And trying to represent. It. So yeah. now the evolution is, uh oh, now they no longer have aces. So yeah. now they get called lighter in later positions. So but now, now it's even it's even changed days. now. Now people aren't raising light that often under the gun. Uh, no. uh, it's because everybody's playing so deep. You know what I'm trying to say? But, but uh, that's right. It, so. it used to be a, it used to be a before the flop and flop game. Now it's a turn and river game. It's. Yeah, it is exactly what it is. And uh, it's still a fight. That In the old days, it was easy as can be to pick up the I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this, Mike. Number one, you know, I, I had demanding chip leads in so many tournaments I was in. And I remember. When people ask me what's the hardest thing about playing poker, I said playing a deep stack. Right. And they laughed at me. I, they said, why? I said, well, if you got a short stack, you got one move. You have so many different things you have to think about the scissors or you have to do with a big stack. Yeah. Not not that. I never have, have a big, a big stack, stack, so I, I don't need to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but I always I end up I usually end up with a above average stack, but I just wait till the later parts of the tournament to get it. You know, and, and well, you're an above average kind of guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's kind of like. Uh, uh, the thing that bothers me the most, I, I bring it up on every podcast, which I, I continue to do, is the max late reg and the unlimited re-entries are just destroying poker, in my opinion. What's your opinion on that? Um, well, unlimited re-entries, I think, is bad. One re-entry isn't so bad. I, I mean, I, for example, flying all the way over to Fox was to play the main event, losing right. one hand and having to fly all the way back was, it was, would be miserable. Right. And we used to do that all the time, by the way. But we don't. then right. again, we would play cash. You know, if, the game, if we got knocked right. out on day one, we'd play cash for three days, and then we'd come But home. we always used to go over there for two or three weeks. But, you know, as you as – you, that, that's fun when you're in your 20s, in you know, your 30s or whatever. As you get older, who wants to fly – and stay at Foxwoods for three weeks. Who wants uh, to, you know, who go here for three weeks and live in a hotel? You just get, you know, it's that's yeah. why I guess poker tournaments are a probably for the stake player and b for the uh, younger guys. Yeah, two thousand and seven. Um, when I final table the one that Jonathan Little won, I said I'll never. Be, I bet ten thousand. I'm never coming back to Foxwoods, and I never went back. <laughs> for the I first hated ten years I lived in Las Vegas, I, I was only in Las Vegas probably three, three and a half months out of the year. Yeah, I thought I was never here either. I mean, I, we were we were you on know the, the road. World Series consisted a month and a half of it. Other right. than that, you was here maybe two months out of the rest of the year. You, you know, there was a stop every month, and you were there for three to four weeks. Yeah, and uh, and the thing is, is uh, but there was you know back then there were sixteen WPTs, and it's just different. That, it's different. In that was it. Now there's sixteen tournaments a day everywhere, where they just keep you know more and yeah. more reentries. I, I and, personally, I, I'm not. I. I if I ever play another tournament, I I'm with you. I I I, I can't I can't sit there I, for two full days, get down to the last six percent of the players and min cash. Right. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't I, excite me. I enjoy the World Series of Poker. I I enjoy playing the mixed game tournaments, and uh, for yeah. some reason, I hate tournament poker. But at the, I just enjoy playing the World Series, and it's fun. Well, and, the World Series is where all your friends come back. Everybody's gathered. Everybody's there. You're in the light. It's our moment. It's, yeah. You, you know, you got to be in that mix. And and the the thing is 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 I tell people all the time is so the 10k mix games are what the entire World Series used to be. So you have we have between 100 and 200 people that play the 10k mix uh, championship events, and they're all the same people, which is what the horseshoe used to be back back in up until yeah. 2000 until it moved in 2005. So I mean, it was we used to have 200 400 games all the way up to 2000 4000 right from 2 4 3 6 4 8 6 12 8 16 
one, two, fifteen, three. It, it, it used yeah. now it, there. Then once you know, online kind of went down. You could walk in there, be a thirty sixty game, and then a two thousand four thousand game. Yeah, well, it's kind of what it is now. I mean, we have a two four hundred game uh, that's been going a lot, but uh, I don't get into the good one that you get to play in. I have to play with all the all the tough players, but it, it, I don't mind it because the the game is kind of weak tight, so it allows and they think I'm super tight, so it allows me to steal a lot more. Where in well, the, the, the beauty the beauty of the mixed games we play, draw games and stuff, it still has a higher luck factor to it because yeah. you know it's a lot of times do or don't you know you have to draw or you don't well that's the thing you know that's why i always used to like to play horse you know because i knew where i was at in every hand i didn't have to worry about the luck of whether i was going to hit the draw in the end and make my hand you know yeah. uh, when i got when i was well betting, i i, I help i help put the games together and and pick the games and i tell them if you put too many carnival games in here this game is going to go it's the biggest problem they have now i tell people all the time i'm like you know i don't know how much walk-up traffic you're going to get but if we just played horse every day i promise you you get a lot more than you would now you know well if you just covered to the drama halls and the uh what i don't know whatever the other game uh the baducis the the badacis it because you can only play the game like six or seven handed, right. and every and it's always two players head up, and the hand takes I never, so long that other people lose interest. It's I, just it's just I, boring. I, I it's won't, always a split pot. It's annoying. Yeah, um, I won't even play uh, what, 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 with Baduci Badesi. Those games are just they take twenty two minutes to deal out eight hands, and exactly and right. seven of them are chopped, and it's a big waste of time. And all those people don't think it's a waste of time. They're just fucking bunch of imbeciles. That's all. Well, so, that's um, because it's, it's well. In my draw to playing the mixed games is I don't have to study every player. I don't have to sit there focused for ten hours. You can sit down. You can have fun. Not pay attention. Play more hands. You yeah. know, it's not about setting them up, trapping them, doing this. You get them ball. It's right. it's just much more relaxed to me. Right. I mean, when you play no limit hold them cash, I mean, you, you really can't talk much. You have to have fun. You have to just focus because every everybody's. Dude, they they watch everything you do. It's just it takes yep. a tremendous amount of focus. So I like you know. And I, if everybody sits there for eight hours waiting for that one scenario. Yeah, it's all I tell people. If somebody all, hits it, they get up and leave. That's it. People, when you play no limit hold them, you're just you're grinding, just staying alive, waiting for the one hand, and that's what no limit hold them is. You know, and if people realize if you if you play. Here's where no limit got screwed up. Honestly, Mike, when they put a minimum buy in and a cap buy in. Because if they played no limit with smaller, smaller blinds, and you could buy in more, the game would be so much better. Or, but how about like what people don't realize is back in the day. Okay, this is the thing. Like the, the, these casinos are so stupid. Back in the day, okay, it was if you had a ten twenty game, the most you could buy in for was two grand. Quarter fifty, right. five grand. Fifty, a hundred, ten grand. There's a reason why they did that. It kept people from going broke. It kept, it kept them in action. Yeah, right. It kept games people in action, and the games went longer. And I just don't understand, you know, why they let it started letting people buy. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you deep. why. Because they didn't want. Say you're playing. Let's just call it a five ten no limit game, and a guy buys in five hundred, loses, buys in a thousand, loses, buys in two thousand, loses, buys in five thousand, wins, and out the door he goes. Yeah. It's it's you know it's, it falls back to the, almost the Martin scale system, but it's. If you keep it under under control, but the game also plays tighter, you know, well, it, you it, know, you don't have as many chips on the table. It takes eight hours for the game to get going. I don't I, know. I, don't like I, I just, you know, like when me and Prahlad used to play on an ultimate bet, like he would like auto fucking go on tilt for ten thousands, like there were quarters, like all in ten thousand, all in ten thousand. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so I, I disagree with that. You know, I think when you can only buy in a certain but amount, but you're playing and, head up. And yeah, but I mean, when you go on, when people go on tilt, like they just start auto rebuying five and ten balls. And when they're buying, when they're playing deep, they they play way more care. Well, I think that happens more a lot more online than it does in, in live, yeah. in my opinion. But. Yeah, I don't play. I only play in, if I get invited to a good. Uh, a good no limit game that's t uh they want me to be on the stream and there's two people that are going to give away a hundred thousand other than that i don't really play no limit i'm like you i just play the mix I, I i i 
I play so little, no limit. It's, I don't. I, it drives me nuts. Anymore. Yeah. After the World Series, I played quite a bit because uh, I I thought my no limit game was really good. I had a deep run in the main event, so I started playing a bunch, and I was just crushing it. And uh, so my no limit game's there. Uh, without me even having to run one motherfucking sim, it's my no limit game is still <laughs> as good as I, I'll put my no limit game against anybody, you know. And I'm not calling anybody out. I'm just saying I'll put my no limit game if I play. You're more trying to say you're not afraid to play, <laughs> right? I mean, if I play the same people every single day, you know, I'm gonna learn all their tendencies and I'm gonna I'm gonna beat them just like anything else, you know. But I don't want to. You know, poker's not about playing the best players in the world. It's about playing the fucking fish. So I have no real interest in playing the high rollers with 30 of the best players in the world. It's just no interest. I have just no interest. I, it'll never happen. No matter how much money I yeah. have, it'll just I, never happen. I don't disagree. Yeah. I don't disagree. You know, people, but, you know, you can, people just don't realize that. They're just like, poker's about playing, playing in games where people are worse than you. If you play in games where you're always better than they are, you're always going to win. And that's the bottom line. I mean, that's that's what poker is, you know. And and the more people get involved with poker, the more, you know, uh, you're going to find people stepping up that think they're better than they are, and then they, they get reality checks, you know. And I think uh, it's pretty easy to exploit the GTO players when you're playing live. Uh, you just do opposite of what most people do, you know. And uh, you set well, obviously, up. there's more to it than that, but yeah, yeah. There's, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I've had tremendous success. Uh, I mean, I played no no limit for not one no limit tournament for two years, then I played the LAPC, which I got 27th, and I got really unlucky. Well, I, I do believe this I do believe the GTO type play in tournaments, if they use that strategy in cash, it might not be as effective. I, you know, I personally really don't know, yeah. I just don't play the game anymore. Yeah, you know, I um. I don't play much, but I know that I I finished 27th in LA PC, and then I played the main event, uh, which I got 199th out of 9,000, and then I played the turbo, which I got 30th out of like 700, and those were the three no-limit hold'em tournaments in a row I played. And I hadn't played a no-limit tournament two two years, and I felt, I felt that I, uh, honestly, like in the main event, I, I felt I played against one person that might have been as good well, as Mike, I was. Well, Mike, you've always been you've always been known as the guy who's results oriented. But I'm However. not. I, I just know. <laughs> you know. I shouldn't say that because I feel it. You know what I'm saying? I feel well, somebody. Different. I feel when people play better than me. Like I, I in in L. A. I play, when I finished 27th. I I thought I played with two people who I thought were better than me, and they both made the final table. You know, and uh, so I could I could feel when they're better than you or at least as good. Uh, I mean, there's plenty of those players. I try to stay away from them, you know, but after not. I mean, I, I must look at it completely different. When I play with bad players, they do they do stuff to me that I think is genius. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm like, right. there's, there's just no way you can be betting here with this hand. And I and I. I just what they do just doesn't add up to me. So they they buffle me all the time. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, they don't do that against me because they they think that I'm a super nit. So uh, they think if I bet that <laughs> when I, I play against good sure. players, I do much better. You know, well, we all do. I see. You know, it's funny. Uh, I, I I mean, I disagree with that scenario, but 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 I do. I, I mean, you know how Doyle always says, "Oh, just let me play good players. I'll I'll always win." Well, the truth of the matter is, Listen, you, I, I believe the same thing. You know, uh, I know. I know how I've done against bad players, and I know how I guess, uh, I do against good players. I understand good players. I know why they're doing and what they're doing. Right. Bad players, I never know where they're at. Right. That's that's a good point. But they're going to end up making a mistake and not, yes. They're going to yeah. make bigger mistakes, of course. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like in, in like the mixed game I want to play with, uh, you know, like like I'm talk like you get to play in a really good game. I I don't I get to play in it maybe if it once a month if I'm lucky, but uh, uh, when I do have to play with all the better players, uh, I know where they're at in every single hand, and I can, they they'll make big folds to me. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm not gonna make big scores. You know I'm not gonna like playing two four. I mean I'm sure you've won or lost fifty. I don't know how many times in that game you play in, but like I'm gonna win or lose like. 10 or 20 and uh i'll know where i'm at in every hand uh so i'm pretty happy playing and you know when i play and you know if i have to play there you know so you know i I'm, i guess i'm different i never i've never really been the guy who said listen i gotta win all the money i'm not gonna be happy till i get it all no i've never been i'm just either. not if, if i do well for a month i take two months off 
No, I, just I really I don't, don't care. No, it's I understand exactly. And see, that's where you know we where we've kind of grown up a lot is. Uh, I did really well at the World Series, and I did pretty good afterwards, and I got myself a little bankroll, uh, and uh, I. I played like once in the last uh, six weeks, and if I don't feel good, I just don't go play. I, I mean, I'd rather yeah. I'd rather pay my bills. You know, the days the days of playing twenty four hours. Of this, I'm an eight to ten hour guy. Yeah. I got my two dogs. I feel bad if I leave them longer than that. Yeah, I'm as comfortable in life as I've ever been. I'm as happy as I've ever been, and it's probably because now I you know handle things in much more moderation than I ever did. So yeah. And, and, and that, you know, that's, that's the most important thing is like, you know, with with the injury I went through and then, you know, kind of losing everything. It's like, I got a real perspective on money. Like now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden I'm just like afraid to go broke. Now I'm not afraid to go broke when I'm in the game, you know, but I mean, I, I I play, I'll play, you know, I play poker, but, but I mean, I'm not going to play. Just to if there's a good game going. Oh, I heard there's a good game. Mike, you see, come, come play. Life is a poker game, but on a bigger scale. Yeah, everything I, you do or think, yeah. that's the way life is. I don't want to go broke in life. I don't want to go broke in this game. Everything's just a bigger scale. I want to do moderation. I don't, you know, everything. You can just relate it. I, I mean, I do. And then when I got to golfing every day, I related everything to golf. Right. And uh, I heard you're a heck of a golfer, man. Uh, but it's well, tough. I got to down w- to probably about at my course. I, you know, I could break par. That's awesome. On the road, I could, you know, get down to shoot seven. Yeah, it's probably three handicaps. But you can't uh, make, you can't make, good. you can't make any money because they all know what you shoot, right? So. Well, right. And when you get down to that good, everybody matches up on so many strokes. And if you don't continue to stay on top of your game, you're just going to lose. Right. So, yeah, Max, so. so. It, it was, I mean, I did, I did well. I yeah. made a lot of money in a couple of years the last couple of years before I quit. So basically now, what are, you, what are you doing with yourself? You're just playing the game over at the Aria and uh, and just kind of chilling. You dating anybody now? Um, No. I actually just got out of that relationship. Um, <laughs> so I've been in like three long relationships, and every time I get out of one, I just kind of take two years off. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, I don't have... So that two-year point's coming up. If I get out of mine, I'm, I don't have two years to get off, take off. I'm getting fucking old, man. <laughs> I'm you know, I, I, funny thing is, I got two dogs, and I I, I, I like dogs more than I do the girlfriends. Uh, yeah, I, I have my. I, I, I still have, time. Hey, I still have my cat from that 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 was cruising around when we were partying together, buddy. He cut out. I, I said I still have my cat, my little Flash. So he's eight. He'll be eighteen next. Oh, month. you do? <laughs> yeah. You remember little Flash? Oh my god. From the day. Yeah, he's. I do. He's uh he'll be jumping on That's up here fun. on the podcast any minute. He he lo- he loves to come up here and, and fuck around. But um <laughs> listen, uh I want to I want to bring this up because uh my uh my man Danny, he uh he told me to bring this up. He said he said, uh, "Lane, do you remember the time you you accidentally bumped into a gangbanger at Commerce and then he and his crew followed you into the <laughs> elevator?" What's up with that? This is so funny. So I was I was so lit up and I'm walking by to the whole, up to the elevators, and these, you know, five like Mexican gangbangers were, whatever. And I, I stupidly, I started kind of imitating them, and they caught me. So now I'm getting in the elevator, and the leader or whatever turns around and says, I, I, "He's not happy." He gets in the elevator with me, and Danny has the camera rolling, and so he has it on camera. And, and Danny says to me, he "Goes." I didn't think Lane was going to make it back. This guy came up into my I didn't even think about it. I mean, because I, I wasn't being serious. This guy's in my room. I offer him a beer. Next thing we know, we're buddies. Yeah. And this guy has zero intentions of coming up and being nice. I believe it, man. That's pretty funny. And then, and then he left, right? He, he left. When he, he, and he left his wallet. He, so I knew who he was. But I probably got lucky because he knew he was on camera. Right, 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 right. Yeah. But, uh, he once once by the time we made it up the stairs, he knew I was just you know drunk and playing around. But yeah, you drunk? No, I never. I've never seen you drunk before. So you know, uh, you know how little I drink. I don't do anything. That's what I was I mean, going to ask you. You are you uh, on off, off on off? You're off the wagon. You're on the wagon now. You're you're good. I, you have, I just don't like to. I've never. This is crazy, but I never liked the taste of alcohol. I literally what? drank just to be drunk. Really? I like being drunk. 
I hate the taste of alcohol. I hate the taste of alcohol, so I never drank. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> that's why when MDMA came into my life, uh, I, I kind of went a little crazy because I just. If I, I had to do it all over again, I would just do pot. Uh, I, but yeah, you know, I knew nothing about it. I knew I, nothing about anything. When I know, smoked I pot, though, I used to get like I tried pot a couple times back in the day. It used to make me so paranoid. I used to like be flipping out like the world was coming out now. <laughs> but now. Uh, <laughs> Now, now when I do it, I just chill and I feel good and I relax. But, but hey, I, Mike, I, half the people that know you would think you're still paranoid and think the world's flipping out. Yeah, well, it is the world is <laughs> fucking flipping out. That's that's a fact. We 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 know we know the world's gone fucking crazy. I mean, just the things that, that I, I don't even know. you you know what I'm talking about. The world's gone fucking crazy. I'm not getting you started. That's for yeah, sure. Don't this don't, 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 don't get hours. me started. What I think I, don't, I just you know what's funny is like no, no no and change the subject. No, like five years ago, I was like running my mouth at the World Series talking shit to somebody, and they're like, Mike, you can't say that. That you can't. What do you mean I can't say it? I live in America. It's free speech. And like. And then I then I learned there's this PC culture and and that you have to watch what you say yeah. now and you have to watch what you know so I don't I'm not, I don't change the way I you know you don't like me go fuck yourself I don't I don't care you well know, you know and everybody's so subjective about absolutely everything you can't say one sentence without them picking apart the sentence instead of understanding the context yeah. you have to be so politically correct it's just, it's, it's just, I can't even take it. No, it's 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 pretty fucked. It's pretty crazy. So um, I just don't even deal with it. You know, I just show up, play poker, uh, work on my podcast, work on uh, do, video. We doing? Yeah, we got we're just we're, do, we're doing a little YouTube video coming up here. We're gonna do a little. We're gonna do a little Mike Mattiso imitates Mike Postel uh, YouTube video uh, skit. <laughs> I think it's gonna be pretty funny. So. Um, you know, I plan on, on, on doing that, and uh, and that's probably on the horizon next week. And hopefully I'll feel better, and the girlfriend will be back in town annoying me and driving me crazy. And uh, anyway, so we have a uh, some phone calls that came in. One one is for you, one is for me. We're going to play them, see what, and uh, will you uh, answer what they have to say, okay? Yep. Right, pl- play it. Play it there, sir. Hey, Mike, this is Mark from North Carolina. I had a quick question for Lane. I'd heard part of a story back in the day about uh, Ted Forrest bought him a, a tennis racket for his birthday, and but I didn't hear the end of that story, and it sounded like a fascinating story. I was wondering if Lane could uh, could tell you about that one, because I'd like to hear the rest of it. A tennis, Take care, man. A tennis racket? Yeah. Yeah, so, all right. So, yes, he, he was a tennis player, and I didn't know it, and it, we was at his house, and he has a tennis court. So we decided to play a match for fifty thousand, and <laughs> and I, I but the rule was he he he's a tennis player and I wasn't but the rule was he had to play left handed. Okay. Okay. So, so we played and and it was it was close. What but what he and so this is still uh, under protest because what he started doing was playing you know left handed backhand which is basically right handed holding it with your left hand, uh, and yeah, I yeah, I couldn't yeah. return that. No. So I said, hold on. You were to play left-handed. That's not left-handed. He goes, I have the racket in my left hand. I said, no, 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 no. So we're still arguing this one. <laughs> All these years you're still arguing this one. Well, you know, mine and Ted's history with finances is – yeah, I don't want to. Let's not go. Let's not go there, man. That you're, it's, you're, uh, that, it's, that one's water under the bridge because yeah. that's not even close to the biggest bet we've made. <laughs> no, you know, I, you know, when Ted was really struggling for a while, it really kind of bothered me. I wish I could have helped, could have like helped him out a lot, but because I know, well, you know, he, he, he come and stayed at my house. He would stay at my house for a month at a time. I, he, yeah. Ted did a lot for me, and I, I'll never, I'll never turn my back on. Well, that's him. And, and you he know, knows it, so. that's that's the difference between you and a bunch of people that forget where they come from like you think jrb remembers what joe cassidy did for him i I really don't know but jrb JRB doesn't give a shit what anybody about anybody but himself i have no problem calling you know i everybody has everybody has these these what do you call it i guess promises or negotiations they make with themselves throughout their life you know if somebody say I don't know, say that you see a guy beat his kid or something, you look at yourself and you make an agreement saying, I will never do that to my kid, Mm -hmm. and then you just live with that. Well, I've made numerous agreements. I haven't lived up to all of them, but most of them I try to. And, you know, and I have 
a basis of foundation. I try to stay honest, loyal, etc. And you know, you just try to stay on target with that the best you can. But when money comes into it, stuff, it's amazing how often people forget. Yeah, thank you. Oh my God, somebody on. I, I tell people this all the time. It's like I'm not going to name names, but like there's certain people I loan money to, and they said, "Yeah, give me back in two weeks," and it ended up being like a year and a half. And, and then all of a sudden, when I when they are rich and I ask them to borrow, they're like, oh, "They wouldn't. They, nobody would help me out." And then there, oh my God, then there's another, got- another certain person that completely forgot that. Like I staked him for three years and he was like 50, I was like 50, he was like 50 something thousand in makeup with me and he quit, quit, uh, with me. And then, uh, uh, I owed him money, uh, after he owed me, uh, a lot of money yeah. for a while. And then all of a sudden he just like forgot, he like totally forgot absolute, that, that, he, that I staked him and everything, was, you know, my absolute favorite was I lent somebody $2,000. Mm-hmm. They and I, I won't say his name, but you might be able to guess it. He hits the tournament in Florida for seven hundred and fifty thousand. Mm-hmm. He he doesn't pay me my two thousand. Oh, uh, t- must now, be in T.J. Cloutier, right? Who else could it be? No, Chino. Chino. Oh, oh well, yeah, he still owes me twenty seven hundred too. <laughs> welcome to my oh, welcome to better. our life. So, so now yeah. we're at Windstar, and and I chopped the tournament, mm-hmm. but we we both hit the final table, and he 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 so he gets like seventy five hundred from me. Well, he gets it. And it goes to his backer, but he lost it all. Yeah. So well, he says, Lane, will you bail me out? Will you give him the 7500 I says, Tino. <laughs> I says, you owed me 2000 and won 750000 and couldn't pay me. Yeah. What makes me think? How much you got to win to get me the 7000 Dude, he's, he's owed me. <laughs> I, I I put him in, He came to, to, to uh, Mohegan let's Sun. Not talk about, let's not hammer on people. We'll no, I this. love Chino, uh, I dude. Chino pays everyone back. You just have to be there when he, when, when he wins. But but. Well, but Chino literally, he came to Mohegan Sun with thirty thousand. Is when uh, my deep sax poker tour at, at uh, Mohegan Sun. He loses the thirty in the pit. He has no money to buy in the tournament. I then get a thousand dollars off my credit card, and I was like dead broke at the time. I mean, uh, and the next thing you know, he he cashes for seventy six hundred, and I told my girl in case he if he gets knocked out to be there. And when she got downstairs, he was already out and already took the 7500 and blew it in the pit. So, uh, yeah. and he's won a million dollars twice since, and I still don't have my 2700 So Well, uh, the problem is you get yourself in such a far hole that you need to win it all in order to bail out. And, well, the, I mean, these and listen, are, I've been in the hole. I've owed people money. I still owe some people money. Yeah. Well, a lot of people owe money. It's just that's the industry we're in. Yeah. I, owe, I the thing you start to learn, You start to learn that hitting singles, actually will get it done. You don't need a home run. No. And that that's the thing now is I'm not in a, a hurry to w- get my millions back. I'm I'm just I I'll have I know in a year from now I'll I'll be a millionaire again. I'm not even worried about it. You know what I mean? And I well, and I don't I don't hey, Mike, I, for some reason everybody thinks I, I owe I, a Mike, lot of money. Mike, but, you should worry about it. Why? <laughs> All I care about is getting my not bullet. getting any younger. Well, I don't You're not care. Getting any healthier. I just the care about getting any easier. Well, I I just care about getting my bills paid. I'm not going to play when uh, I I have plenty of games I get into where I pick up plenty of money. I don't need to worry about it. You know, it's just you're all right. it's just not uh I don't need to play every day and put myself through hell and my body through hell. Uh I go play if there's a good game and if I'm or if I'm feeling good, you know. That's the bottom You still bet in sports, Mike? I made I made one sports bet in three years, and that was. You mind uh, if I tell 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 your fans your story? Uh, no, there's too many. Mike bet Mike Mike bet sports so much, <laughs> and then finally he says, "I'll never bet sports again." He has to go to jail for six months. This is my favorite Mike story I tell. I says, "Mike, he went to jail. They gave him a phone call. He took Atlanta and over." Yeah. <laughs> no, I. I... No, I I, 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 I lost two hundred and fifty thousand gambling from jail. I was pretty, I'm saying that you were betting sports. <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty sick, but it's okay, you know. Yeah. I don't. God, I mean, money was just nothing to me. I was just it was it was nothing. It was yeah. you know, and but you know, I, I look, I I I've met a couple of people, right? I'm pretty good friends with that that kind of treat money like nothing, and I tell them, I'm like, dude, you don't understand. I'm like, if you 
Go, I don't care how many. They listen, you Mike. Have. The same yeah. people try to tell us. Yeah, exactly. You know how many people try to tell me? I mean, my answer was, I just, what, what do you do with all the money you make playing poker? I just play higher. That's it. So, uh, you know. That's the only I reason can, to win money is so you can play bigger. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't, I I, I, I can't, you're right. You, people don't, aren't going to listen to me, you know. You have to but go through it. You, 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 would think, to, you just have to go through it yourself. The, I, the thing is, I always hoped that, that people would listen to me because I, I had been through so much and what, and I just know that if something bad happens to them there's nobody going to be there for them and then they're they're going to say well, well i can't borrow five thousand or i can't that, that they'll realize that that uh everybody's out for themselves nobody everybody like you said everybody forgets where they came from i think that's one of my biggest matter of fact, i know it's my biggest pet peeve is the people who forget where they come from i i think i the people who forget all How the they got to where they are yeah. well i mean they just forget all the things you did for them it's just like it's all of a sudden they have money and it's like Oh, you never did nothing for me, you know. So I, I wouldn't I, have I wouldn't have my accolades or have anything I uh, I had. Well, I mean, I maybe I'd have more. I I'm not saying that I don't know, but without Ted, Ted did everything for me. Yeah, Ted did a lot for you, me for you. I did a lot for everyone, and uh, Ted did a lot for everyone. Ted did a lot for everybody. Even Ted, Ted, there is there a person Ted didn't stake? I don't think so. Ted always Ted's the guy. Him. You could screw him out of X amount of money, and he's going to come right back and give you another chance and another one. <laughs> he's a good guy, man. That's why it really bothered me a lot when you know I know that you know Ted was struggling to play well for a while because you know we partied so much and stuff. But uh, I'm just glad he's doing well now, and that's all that matters. So you know, I yeah, always, he, I always wish he's, for he's happy as can be. I mean, I wish I could talk more about it, but yeah, it's out of respect for him. I wouldn't. Yeah. You know, so um, anyways, we got another call. All right, let's see what this person has to say. Let's answer this one. Hey, Mike, uh, this is Eric from uh, Canada. Uh, I love your show, uh, and I love watching you back on High Stakes Poker. Uh, I just have a question. I'm uh, just been playing one-two at the casino lately, and a lot of these, a lot of the, I'm just kind of a newer player. A lot of the regulars bring up all this, like, GTO, ICM stuff, and I honestly, I don't really understand I was just wondering, do I need to know all of that? Uh, one, two, at the casino. Because I've been struggling and hoping to uh, uh, improve my game. So thanks a lot for your advice. I'll be tuning into the show. And uh, take care. Keep up with everything you're doing. Thank you. Uh, in a one, two game, I do not think you need to know all that. Um, I played in I one. I think that would only, com that only complicate things. Because <laughs> nothing, nothing in one, two uh, no. uh, has to do with GTO that, Nothing follows that guideline. <laughs> no, you. Those are when you're playing against the best players in the world. You need to know what they're doing. Uh, when you're playing one and two, and up, I mean two and five. I mean you just you don't need to know any of that. I mean I think it's people aren't good enough. It's they're irrelevant. Probably, it's irrelevant. I mean people have uh, no matter what they are, they're gonna they're gonna make these crazy plays that don't look right, and they'll be. And they're they're also gonna think these weak hands that they have are bigger than they are. They'll plot middle pair and, and think they have a big hand or something. And, it, you know, yeah. they'll go broke with one pair all the time uh, against players that there's no way they'd get their money in with one pair and they don't read other players. They don't see table image. Right. And that's what's more important in that game probably is your table image, understanding right. the other players. Yeah. Forget all the GTO. So yeah, I agree. It simple. You know, I talk, I talk, if people like, like, they think I'm the biggest nit. I let them think I'm a nit, and then when the blinds go up, I, I'll switch gears, and they always think I have it, and I don't need to know shit about GTO. I just know I can make them fold when the blinds go up, and uh, I love setting up my image. Dude, that's what it's all about. Uh, back in the days, I mean, there's two ways to play. You could play super aggro. Like People don't realize me and you were like two of the top five most aggro aggressive players in the world and you were way more aggro than me you were probably like number one and uh and now uh in this day and age i mean you're you can't people don't like to fold so if you're if you have a wild image they're always going to pay you off and i tell people all the time well what's harder to make hands or to not make hands it's harder to make well hands. i say this I, I you know it's simple I, I always say there's two kind of players: those who build a pot then try to make a hand, or those who make a hand and try to build a pot. One's, you know, they're both effective, but one's more risky. Right. And uh, the other one is, as far as the aggro or whatever, you can't be aggro now because there's seven aggro players at the table. Right. We used to have a saying: if the table's loose, you play tight. If you play tight, if the exactly. table's loose, you, you know. Everybody's play playing tight. I'm now opening everybody every. Everybody knows it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's why I don't know how far or how pe people. 
you know, I most people that go broke in poker are people that are playing tournament poker or they're playing no limit hold them uh, and they go broke because they don't understand that they're, everybody plays the, the ebbs and flows of yeah. poker no matter what you could you could run bad for six months and, and i mean lose every, not every session but you could just lose the biggest beats and think you're doing everything wrong when in fact you're just having a bad run i talked to i talked to a guy yesterday who won a nine hundred thousand dollar pot in the game i ain't gonna name any names um uh, and he told me how um uh, uh he had like it went like i don't know like Four thousand and like five, four spots, and he made it like forty to go with like king ten off, and another guy made it eighty, and he called and they count jack nine three, and and the guy bet and he just shipped in four hundred thousand or three hundred something thousand. The guy wow, called the queen off. Huh? The guy called <laughs> the guy come jack nine with two clubs, and he had king ten. He had a gutter ball. The guy had a, the guy had a set of nines, and it came club club. <laughs> oh my for 900 k and the funny part is is he didn't know that he had king 10 offsuit i mean he thought he had <laughs> i mean here's the bottom line here's he thought he had king 10 offsuit but when he was flipping his card up the first card that flipped up was a jack and he didn't even know he had a jack he thought he had king 10 in his hand and so i mean you you, 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 you can't make so this bad. up you can't make this up and so now he's squeezing he's telling me how he's squeezing the last card and he wasn't sure what it was so he's squeezing he goes yes it's it's black he goes i'm 50 50 right and, and the guy's like please I would have asked for a deal. Dude, the guy's like please don't slow roll me he goes shut the fuck up i just put four hundred thousand in <laughs> fucking if i want to slow roll you i'll slow roll you let me squeeze this card and it ended up it sounds like can too it, no it wasn't it, i'm not gonna oh, believe, it. It, it, believe it or not it wasn't can too that's hard to believe and he, but he, he, he told me this story and i just said man you were one sick fuck you know and uh, <laughs> but he was uh you know but that's a like now that I'm not a sick fuck, like I, you know, and I play with players, all these people that are all sick fucks, I'm thinking, man, these people are sick. And I used to be like, like me and you yeah. were, were top five sick fucks. And I'm thinking, myself, when I was in my twenties, when I was in my twenties, a wise man told me, he says, Lane, gamble it up while you're young. He says, don't do it so much when you're older. You got plenty of time to make it back now. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You know, so, uh, you know, I'm, uh, <laughs> Uh, my biggest problem is is uh, what, what was after full tilt is I wanted to get all my money back, and uh, even then I got uh, you know I was just in a hurry to you know I, I didn't want to play less than four I never played less than four hundred eight hundred for for uh, uh, the guy, guy just t typed in I can't believe it wasn't Cantu in the nine hundred K pot <laughs> no <laughs> yeah, I tired to believe it wasn't Cantu either but no it wasn't Cantu uh, uh, but I'm sure uh, we um, we're actually going no, down. Either. We're going down to Cabo for Super Bowl weekend. Uh, and there's going to be some big games there, and I'm sure there'll be some some good cancer really? stories. Yeah, it's. Well, let uh, me know. Yeah, we we set it up. It's a uh, we're actually uh, we're renting Rusty. I think it's Rusty Wallace's like mansion or something in in Cabo, and uh, we're going to be playing poker every day, hanging out on the beach, watching the Super Bowl. Uh, there's well, like make sure to uh, make sure to let me know. Yeah, I will. So, uh, anyways, uh, I appreciate you uh, jumping on in and talking to the fans. And uh, is there anything out there you guys want me to ask uh, Lane while he's on the phone? Uh, what's that? What? Wait, the what? Oh, rigged in the NFL. I don't know. I don't play. I don't bet the NFL. It is rigged, huh? I bet the NFL. Uh, yes, I bet the. <laughs> you must have been reading my Twitter. Oh, 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 talk, fucking oh, rigged. oh, talk about the rigged NFL. No shit, it's fucking rigged. Dude, they make sure. I'm explaining it to you. I'm explaining it to you. When they say we're going to the show, going to the NFL, of course, they're going to put on a show. Mm -hmm. Like, you think you think if a team wants to score, the refs can make them score? You yeah. think they don't want them to score, they can stop them from scoring? Every, you think every there's a reason why. The biggest battle going so that more people will tune in. They need all the hype in every division, so they keep it. You're right. When they say that it's going to be the game of the week, and it say Seattle 49ers, and that game always ends up tied, or how about last year? The game of the year was Rams-Chiefs. Guess right. what? They scored 102 points or something. The Rams haven't scored 
50 points in a game in the last year. Right, but it, here's I the mean, thing. You watch games, and I'm like, at the a game, whether it's a blowout or not, by the end of the game, they make sure that – there's uh that that the last drive of the game either covers a spread or puts the game over or under. It's the most incredible thing. And 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 you don't tell me oh that's because you know what back in the days teasers the fucking bookmakers smashed everyone in teasers because yeah. everybody would key a game and that and the ten point favorites would always lose. And nowadays it's it's just the bookmakers <laughs> get killed in teasers. You know. Well. Because every game's like a seven point game, you know, and that, it used to not be. It's like a that. business. It's a business. It's almost a billion dollar business for a reason. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, uh, no, there's definitely uh, none of that. Somebody asked if in the in the private mix game, every there was single any play is subjective. Every single play, they could throw a play if they want or not. Oh yeah, the referees decide happens. everything. I the, could watch. I, I do so well at halftime best because I, I can see which sides they're going for. Yeah. Well, whatever everybody's <laughs> going for, you just go opposite. You know, it's – uh, no, NFL is big business. I mean, I, I don't – I I I haven't made an NFL pick in three – better than three years ago. But you asked me about sports betting, and I did bet uh, game seven of the World Series this year. I couldn't resist getting plus 135 with Max Scherzer on the mound. <laughs> and uh, – it, well, ends up, it ends up it ends up Grenicky out. I get all my bets in. Yeah, I don't. I I have no. I, I, that that's one thing. Uh, I mean, I just have no interest in betting sports. It's just something I've been. You know, when you lose the money I've lost in sports, it's just it's not fun anymore. And I, you know, I had a, a good friend that was ten. You, uh, I don't want to name any names, but you would know. You know who this person is. But he was ten years. BG? He was ten years off the wagon, and now he's back. I mean, he's on the wagon. And now he fell back. He fell BG? back. BG? No, uh, M- MW. Okay. Oh and, yeah, no. And he's fucking lost his fucking mind, man. And I'm trying to help him get back off the wa- back, get back on the wagon, man. Ten years. He fucking was the sickest fuck. This is the only guy that fucking beat me when I used to book. He beat me in Flickr. Him and him and Lingren beat me out of beat us out of three million. I never won betting, I never won booking, and I never won following the sharpest people, so I gave it up, man. So, yeah, you know, it is what it is, man. <laughs> Lane, well, I appreciate the fucking good call, thing. man. And uh, go ahead, enjoy the football, go make some money playing, and do me a favor when you're in the game, if there's a seat opens up, just tell Hanks, man, Mike's kind of struggling. Can you, can you invite, let him come down and play? I mean, he he tells, he tells me, you know, uh, I let him play, and we had a private game. I let him play one night. And he says, I said, I don't know. I, I didn't want him to play. I go, why should I let him play? He doesn't let me in any games. And then so he's like, oh, well, uh, you let me in. I'll let you in. And so, uh, but me and him get along good. So he it's just, listen, I, I don't know why. But they're, they're, to me, I don't want to play with five idiots. I want to play with three. Well, I want to play with three idiots and four good players. Because if there's like five idiots, it's, you know how hard that game is to win? People don't realize that. You agree? Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah. A perfect game is uh, like. Uh, depending, depending on the game. I mean, yeah. not every. I mean, you play five idiots when you're playing, you know. No limit. You know, Omaha, low or certain limit games. Yeah, 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 yeah. Five yeah. idiots playing five, five idiots playing uh, five card PLO for a big O. Yeah, that's, it, that's an insane game. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, you guys play five card PLO also? Yeah, we play big O. Well, big O. Yeah, well, big O. I mean, we people... play big O PLO eight PLO. Uh, we play the triple draw. We play no limit deuce. Yeah, Omaha high low Badugi and yeah, the three stud games. Yeah, that's the lineup was. That was when I was there. You know, uh, yeah, that's a, it's a good, that's a good mix. I mean, there's, just, there's no way. I, I last time I played in it, I won uh, thirty playing three six. Uh, so that kind of like uh, got me by. So that's two months I didn't have. To, that's why I haven't worked really in two months when I made that little score. So, uh, I'm, but I'm really, but I'm careful, man. I'm just, you know, I, I, I mean, Phil Helmuth. I must have put two hundred thousand in his pocket in the last two years. I give him half. I give him half of myself in every game because I'm afraid to go broke again, you know. So uh, I just keep making him money. Uh, but uh, he's done a lot for me, and uh, people don't realize Phil's a good guy. He's he's got a, a small narcissist. Phil's a good guy. Just ask him. Yeah, he's got a little narcissistic personality disorder. But uh, if you're if you're unclear or on the fence, if Phil's a good guy. I'm telling you what, you just you you just ask him and you'll know the answer. 
Yeah, you'll definitely, definitely know if uh, if he'll yeah he'll tell you he'll tell you everything. Somebody, I, asked, I feel if you're listening, you know I love you, pal. <laughs> yeah, somebody asked what your best strip yeah, club story is. Fuck. <laughs> Some somebody asked what your best strip club story is. I said we can't get that. We can't. There's so many. I don't many. want to talk about that. Yeah, we can't go. We can't go there. You know, I can't even uh, categorize. It. Yeah, there's been so 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 many of them. It's just uh, 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 everybody's saying you lost that tennis prop. They're like he played in it with his left hand. That you're you, you, in arbitration. You can't. Win. No, we're in, we're in arbitration, but we kind of just let it go. Yeah, well, that you know, like, that, you know, Ted's a good guy, man. So yeah. Uh, anyways, go I enjoy mean, the rest <laughs> of your fucking day. I appreciate you calling in. Uh, when are you gonna win another bracelet, bro? You've been stuck on me, and you've been stuck on six for quite a long time. I've been stuck on four. Well, I, 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 haven't, I, I really. Let's see. I won my last one in '08. I didn't really play at all. 2009, 2010. Mm-hmm. I played very little. 11 and 12. Yeah. I, 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 just, I don't know. You know, I, I hurt my neck and back from golfing so much, and I was on all those opiates. I finally got off all of them, and yeah. it was just too miserable to sit. How many opi- opi- How many opioids a day. day were you taking? How many were you taking What's a day? How many uh, were you taking? Two, I would, uh, too many. Well, 25, I, I, 30 uh, Norcals a day. Are you serious? I had a five thousand dollar a month habit. Oh my god! I never, no matter how much pain I've ever been in, I've never took more than three a day. No matter how much pain I'm well, in. Well, it escalated. It escalated, and see, I was golfing for so much money that that it, it's either take a pill and make your swing, or or don't be able to make your swing and lose money. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I see what you're trying to say. Yeah, uh, I, I uh, but I knew I knew how sick the opioid epidemic was, and so I told. Well, I quit cold, cold turkey just one day. How? Now, I I got on the blocker. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. You know, what like you a, take that like uh, suboxone, which is like yeah, methadone suboxone. for heroin yeah. guys. But are, are you I, off the suboxone now or no? Down, I weaned that down eighty uh, percent. Yeah. So I'm down to almost nothing. Right. That's so I've good. Got, I've really got a grasp on it now. Yeah. And it's funny, you know, I've done everything. I overcame drinking, I overcome cocaine, I overcome meth, I overcome opiates. I've overcome it all. And That's I and I'm lot. not getting back into anything else. Uh, I yeah, I am um, I I <laughs> you really have done it all. I was always afraid to like I mean the truth of the matter is is the only thing I was really addicted to, which uh, Ray D told me never to do it, but I didn't listen, was was uh the the meth. You know, because you needed well, to Well, you know focused. you know, you're one of the first people to get me to do that. You and I, I don't even want to name the other one. But I, the, the thing, thing is, is I was always told. Don't it was f- the wonder drug for poker. It was. I told people the first, the, the first month, six months plan on meth, I won one point two million, and I thought I would. You no, know, it's, it's equivalent. It's equivalent to Adderall. You're just dead no, it's focused. Way, it's the way, problem is it's you're way more off hardcore. The back of a truck and you're out of control. It's way more hardcore. The focus I got on sure. meth was was ridiculous. It, but and it the poker games went for four days straight. The thing is, is people would stay up. They would not know, and people would stay no, up. They're on perfect. autopilot. Yeah, people, for three days straight, and they would fucking melt down, and you would crush them. But then I told people yeah. after six months, it turns on you, and now they're lining up to play with you, and then you think you're playing well, but you're not. And that's yeah. what the math And does. the other the other worst thing about that drug is it uh, convinces you bad. whatever it is you're doing, you're do- that it's right. So mm. if you're doing something stupid or whatever, it, your, your mind tells you everybody else is stupid and you're right. That's the worst thing about that drug. Right. That's when it turns on you. Yeah. And uh, no, meth is death. I tell people that all the time. I would. You know, I, I, I quit that one day, too. I, I was at my house. I literally had a cell phone. I had a loaded nine millimeter. And I said, I'm not doing anything. I laid there for a month straight until it, it was all gone. Yeah, not well, to all the drugs, so many tell, people. I, so many people I commit no suicide because when you're coming off of meth, you have no dopamine in your brain, and you you're just suicidal yeah. every day for like two weeks. You know, it's yeah, uh, it's pretty crazy. But you know, for people to think Adderall, I, to me, Adderall and meth are not, they're nothing even similar. And I've done. Well, see, I think they are. I mean, you you, you can't eat, you can't sleep, you can't sit, only, you're focused. Right. The only thing, the only where where Adderall be comes like meth is if you stay up for three days on it if you just take sure. uh well uh, the problem uh, is you become delirious and, and you're being held awake by a chemical so correct. basically i always thought the greatest drug i ever did was deliriousness five up five six days buddy i see fur on the walls you know i, I didn't I, the, the shrubs outside look like monkeys you know i had no clue right yeah no i i, I know i know what you're saying speaking of uh 
I need to take me, I need to take me a pain pill right now. I was like, I'm sitting here, I'm in pain. I'm like, I I told myself I had to take a pain pill at one o'clock, and now it's like two o'clock, and I didn't take my pain pill yet. Cause this is what I do. Cause I, uh, I mean, I'm in pain every day. I just refuse to take it anymore. Well, I, like I said, I only take three a day, uh, but I'm, I'm I want to get off them, but I'm in so much fucking pain still. Yeah. I mean, eventually you're just going to tell yourself that the pain is, is, and the problem is Mike, you're just masking the pain. You're not hearing it. Well, so, my injury is so bad that the, uh, the yeah. doctors have said, that don't get me wrong. If you, if you can do it in moderation, it's a wonder drug, but, I, yeah, I, I just I don't use it much. Do, you know, I've never once took an opioid and gotten high off of it. Not once in my whole life, never. All it ever <laughs> did is get rid of my pain. That's it. So, but well, you're missing out. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I, I'm not missing out. I mean, people are dying. There's like 100 people a day yeah. dying in the United States. So, I, I'll tell you this: I was sitting on my couch and I flat gave up. I, if I, I I would take them and I say, if I die, I die, and I'm okay with it. That's when I knew I had a problem. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I know what you're saying. All I'm right, man. Drug. Well, I've been drug. I, like I said, I, I've done a drug in sixteen years, fifteen years, whatever, and I'm happy. Uh, my life's good. Uh, I'm the ha- like you said, you're the happiest you've ever been. I'm the happiest I've ever been. Uh, and well, I'm I, good here. I've Glad had to hear I've had many a millions and been wanting to fucking shoot myself. So uh, I'm very, very happy with my projection of my life right now. I'm trying to do all the right things. Uh, I just, that's all you can do, you know, uh, try and not make the same mistakes I've done in the past. And that's, uh, that's pretty much all right. I can do. Well, you know? That's life. It is. So I appreciate the call lane. Uh, anything else you guys want? Uh, no, the guy just said to me, I took three pills at once. No, I took, I took two gabapentins and a pain pill. Uh, the gabapentins are for the nerve pain this that I have to deal with. Like it's so brutal what I have to deal with, but I, I deal with it now, so I don't I don't really worry about it that much, you know. So yeah, nerve nerve pain is pretty brutal. It's so brutal. It is, but, but you know what? But, right. For th- for three and a half years, I felt sorry for myself. That was the biggest problem. Once I quit feeling sorry That'll for myself, <laughs> and uh, that's when everything started going good for me. And, All right, Mikey, let's cut this off. I, I really have, I have to go. Yep, you got it, man. Lane, I appreciate it. And uh, you got it. Uh, anything else we need from Lane? All right, Lane. Have a great day. Peace. Make some money. Thanks for thanks for uh, coming in on the mouthpiece, buddy. You got it. All right, Take later. care, everyone. Later. Uh, that's a good call. It was fun. A lot of fun. Uh, so um, now uh, we are going to go to our pick of the week. Uh, let me just. Uh, that's what we do here on the mouthpiece. We give out one one game a week. Uh, I won last week. I'm four and nine. Uh, I don't bet them. I just kind of I'm in a pick them contest uh, for all you that don't uh, watch what uh, what I'm doing. Uh, where is what did you do with oh, you moved it? Uh, let me see. Uh, well, I, I I've I've this is what what we're gonna do. Is, so. Our pick of the week is uh, uh, brought to you by mybookie.ag. Uh, so if you guys feel like gambling, betting any sports, get up to 200% deposit bonus uh, by putting in promo code mouthpiece. Uh, promo code mouthpiece, mybookie.ag, and uh, you get up to $1,000, uh, 200% deposit bonus if you guys feel like degenning off or gambling or uh doing whatever you want to do crazy uh i appreciate it if you guys are going to gamble check it out mybookie.ag uh so my pick of the week uh is i've been going back and forth whether i should lay the 13 with green bay or take the nine and a half with denver or take the nine and a half with uh philadelphia or with the giants uh and my gut is telling me to take the nine with Denver. So my pick of the week is the Denver Broncos plus nine. Um, I just, they've played two bad games all year. Their record's four and eight. It should be probably eight and four. Uh, the coaches give away, I don't even know how many games. So uh, it's, uh, 
it's just what it is, you know. So I, I'm going to go with Denver plus nine as my pick of the week. Uh, I lost my YouTube channel on here, so we've been uh, we've been on here for about an hour and fifteen minutes. So we're going to uh, call it a day. Uh, I appreciate all the people who tuned in and uh, come and join us next week uh, for episode twenty nine of the mouthpiece hopefully i'll have some more information of what's been going on what's going on in my life i got a couple of big things working i'd like to share it with you guys i'll talk to you all next week peace take care win some money later the mouthpiece